This nibble originally aired on RSBNB Update, episode 773, Leveling Up Shattered Worlds. Enjoy. General fixes for archaeology fixed an issue where the Inquisitor staff damage boost was not applying to some attacks. Okay, let's talk about the Inquisitor staff. What is this, David, and why is it such a huge deal? And so the Inquisitor staff completes the trio of weapons that are tier 80 but do a significantly higher amount of damage against their weakness in the combat triangle. So you had the Hex Hunter bow was first, the um, Pterosaur Maul from Big Game Hunter was second, and then this staff is the third. So the staff is a tier 80 staff, but against enemies who are melee based, it does approximately, and this is not exact by any means because it affects different abilities a little bit differently. For example, bleeds, autos, and then like standard abilities all work slightly differently. But on average, you're going to be seeing tier 97 damage and tier 88 accuracy. Making let's it just, the best let's just back up a bit here for that. Yeah. Let's just back yeah. up a bit. So, so tier 87 accuracy you said or right tier tier 88 accuracy tier 88 accuracy and 90 tier 97 damage on correct on average and that's not that's not with, every ability but right. on average that is what with it be you know today. you said basics bleeds and what was the other one uh, base i was saying basics bleeds and then like standard abilities like maybe wild magic all work they're all calculated a little bit differently um, so that the reason it's tier 97 is because I, you know, in a normal rotation, you'd be using all those things. Right. And you can uh, see why this is something that people want. Yeah. I mean, it's certainly the best in slot staff for many of the game's end bosses. Would you so take this select- over a Sliske staff? Yes. Uh, almost certainly. Um, perhaps there could be some room for debate, but not really, honestly. Uh, you definitely want to be using this at the places it works, which include Telos, Farago, and Solak. Um, Why does it only work at three. specific places? Well, because it only works against uh, enemies who are melee-based. Okay, gotcha. gotcha. Um, and Araxor as well, because Araxor you could spawn in its mage form. Er, right. You know, it's, Right. By using it. So it would also work at the Rexor. So that's four of the top five or six, um, you know, highest tier bosses in the game that will be working against it. And so it, do, do we know how exactly it was broken if it was just, um, you know, not f- um, firing off and not it doing was doing its... tier It was doing tier 80 damage on auto attacks and a bunch of different abilities. It was just doing tier 80 damage. So it wasn't working at all. That's why that guy paid what? Two bill and then did one telos and then disassembled it. I felt like a jackass this week. <laughs> yeah, it was a uh, it was a tier it was functionally a tier eighty weapon on release. Um, it wasn't working properly. All right, um, the wiki actually has uh, some of these um, other ones where it's possible to be used. Aside from the ones you mentioned, are. Um, Avaris, the Unceasing, Beastmaster Durzag, Commander Zilyana, Darok the Wretched, General Gradar, Guthin, Harakin, Hellweir, Calphite King, Kirill, Krar, Nex, Nex Angel of Death, QBD, uh, Torag, Varak, and Virago. Imagine buying uh, this staff just to use it against the Barrows. Like this. I was like, what? These are all, like you said, <laughs> these are all the bosses that you could ever want to do. Araxor, Telos, yeah, Virago, I mean, the whole Beastmaster. The whole end game is stuffed with melee based bosses. Um, and Magic was just, already the top of its, the top of the food chain. <laughs> Well, so not not rec- not anymore. Actually, melee and rage really? have now outclassed magic uh, for the most part. Uh, really, we could talk about that another time if you want to. Okay. Yeah, oh yeah. Uh, with the introduction of like with ranged, you have backer manual bolts, which brought it very close to forte auto attacking, and then you have the Saren God bow spec got buffed, and the the new the, the what's it called the the new two handed crossbow from ED three. But, but yeah, so uh, that's really good. And then melee is just completely disgusting, especially with the new spear. Like, holy 
that melee is probably the best. Which but spear? Magic is still uh, the new one. That, I mean, it's here, but it's not in yeah wide circulation yeah. yet. What's the spear new tier ninety two spear? It's just like uh, the staff. Uh, what's it called, Sam? It's called uh, Masterwork Spear of Annihilation. Yeah. Um, do you remember the lunging ability from the rework? The the like um, the switchscape rework for yeah. lack of a better yeah, term. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, they just gave that spec, so bleeds last fifty percent longer to the spear, and it stacks with lunging four. Um, so if you were to just do dismember blood tendrils and slaughter with walk on like you like when you walk your slaughter does more damage those three abilities by themselves do over 60,000 damage with the new spear oh yeah. um so that's another really big buff to melee but magic will always be i think the most versatile style so it also feels like to me it's the easiest to, to get use. into yeah, I think Unless so you're, too. you know, um, wanting to use your trim masterwork somewhere, right? Yeah, yeah. I think I think magic is still like really, really good. I think it's magic is almost always the easiest style to learn bosses. Yeah, with. yeah. Um, All right, and it's probably still the best for Telos, which is you know the the biggest money maker. Yeah, which is of course on this list here. Okay. Yeah, and so. Basically, it's still worthwhile to four tick auto attack, um, but if you were to use a staff by itself, you would be more doing more damage with the staff alone than someone who is using seismic and a knock staff. So tier ninety is in four ticking perfectly. Yeah, I thought this was like kind of did it automatically, like it was built in. Wasn't it? Well, there's no, I mean, it's no like built in four ticking. It's just like it. Like if four ticking is on average like seven to eight percent more damage, the staff makes up for that on its own just by being so powerful. Okay. But yeah, it didn't make four ticking easier or anything. Four ticking is still, uh, you know, challenging. You know, I'm just amazed that I completely missed the staff uh, on the archaeology launch. I was, or sorry, the the spear. I was aware of the staff, but I had no idea that they yeah. launched the spear with oh, that the- too. Yeah, you should see Torva prices. A Torva plate body is like 130 mil right now because uh, Trim Masterwork, what are those glorious bars? Is that what they're yeah. called? Yeah, because you need um, Masterwork I, Essence or something to that effect. I believe that you need 16 of those bars yeah. to upgrade the spear from a tier 90 to a tier 92. All right, um, so, what, so what we're seeing then is also a resurgence of the smithing side of the equation there for anybody who's just, you know, a smith that wants to do stuff like that. Yeah, what and also hell? Torva is just through the roof. Yeah, but I mean, if if an even higher, uh, it's even higher archaeology level than the than the staff, right? And that was already one team. So, like to make it. Yeah, and I mean, it's it's something that's going to be focused around the real end game of archaeology, then, because like you said, one yeah. fourteen, you're pretty much there. And then that, w- yeah. that would be why we missed it last week because we were talking about efficiency and we were just getting our head wrapped around the skill two weeks ago. So that makes sense. You can watch full episodes of RSBNB Update right here on this YouTube channel. You can also listen to audio versions of RSBNB Update at update.rsbnb.com and feel free to subscribe to our show on any number of podcast listeners out there at update.rsbnb.com slash subscribe.